I wish he would have heard what I couldn't say when I was drunk that night. You know, what I, when I couldn't say no, when I, you know, I physically couldn't get the words out of my mouth, when my brain couldn't form the words to even say, I, I wish he could have heard. You know, all of my anxiety going through the civil process mm -hmm. really stemmed from how I was treated that night. Um, you know, it was a lot of waiting around to, you know, wait for, th you know, documents to be filed and wait for people to respond and, you know, settlement offers and a lot of, a lot of waiting around and the whole time I was wondering, you know, well, is, is the mediation going to be as bad as as the first time I was interrogated, and is the deposition going to be as harsh as that? And so even when nothing was happening, I was still sick with anxiety. Regardless of, of how drunk I was and how, regardless of whether or not the stories matched up 100% with everyone that was there that night who was also drinking. I mean, aside from all of that, how with the pictures of my legs that they took, they could still say it didn't happen or that there wasn't enough. Because you could see, like, you could see two handprints exactly like that. And I could lay my fingers out on my legs and you know, put my fingers where his fingers were. So when I went to the uh, mental health services, I got someone that wasn't, definitely wasn't a doctor. I don't, they were like a grad student or something like that. And they were just in training and they told me that. And it wasn't great, but I really didn't have any other options at that point. And I mean, I had the appointment and everything, but I didn't reschedule because that really didn't sit well with me. <laughs> like, I went to, you know, if I'm going to go to get therapy, I'd like a, you know, real doctor. At that point in time, I just needed to know, like, how to get by day to day. I, I wasn't focusing on big picture. I was focusing on day to day. And, you know, I would say things like, you know, last night I was sitting there for an hour with a knife waiting for, for Devers to get home. And she would just kind of brush past it to talk about these bigger issues. Mm -hmm. And and so I really, I mean, I stopped going after a while because it, it just wasn't helpful for what I needed. And it was, I left there feeling worse than I did better. I just was very reclusive. I was very closed off. I really didn't leave the apartment. I didn't do anything. I stopped going to parties. I stopped talking to friends. I really didn't clue very many people in into what went on, so it also hurt friendships in that way because I just kind of dropped off the face of the earth. I felt like they, you know, we're going to parties and we're carefree and, you know, having this great time and it didn't feel like something I was capable of. Mm -hmm. I felt much more grown up, first of all, but also just kind of like incapable of joining in on their fun. It, it just wasn't appealing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than having, you know, your boyfriend who you love more than anything put his arms around you and jump and have to tell yourself, like, no, it's him. You know, it's, you know, you're okay, you're safe, or, you know, to to not be able to sleep with your back to the outside of the bed and things like that. And so, so it's a lot of taking back those kind of moments and those memories.